Okay. Now, what I, what I thought I would do is go, I don't really think we're going to get too much into actual sharpening or have the time because I actually have an appointment with uh, my accountant tonight at 6.30, so um, I don't know how far we'll get into actual sharpening. But my idea was to start with the most inexpensive things and work our way up. And I don't, I don't own everything, you know, things like the, uh, the WorkSharp or whatever that thing's called and some of the newer stuff that's come out. I don't really have access to those. So I'll just show you what I have and we'll, we'll work through it. And I'll sort of be able to glance at the, uh, the chat room while we're doing this. And if you guys have questions, hopefully I can address them. So where is my sandpaper? Are you guys familiar with the Scary Sharp system? And this has to be probably the cheapest thing that you can do. And this actually was a kit that I uh, bought from Rockler and uh, have since destroyed by putting droplets of finish on it to check and see if they had oil in them. <laughs> um, so much for that. But the idea is you get a dead flat surface, something like this, like plate glass, uh, and I put little feet on the bottom of it. You can get a piece of granite. Um, I've actually heard of people getting uh, like a granite tile from Home Depot or Lowe's, just one single 12 by 12 tile and using that. The idea is you want to actually put your sandpaper onto a dead flat surface and you're really going to use the sandpaper to do all of your sharpening. Um, advantage to this system is that it's super cheap. Uh, you know, you can get into it very easily with uh, very little money and get really good results too because, you know, you get to this automotive grit sandpaper, you start with, uh, you can start around 320 and work your way up to probably 2000 easily. And that's a pretty damn good way to sharpen. Um, the results are great. Now, the disadvantages of it are, I guess, depending on how you look at it, for some people that's an advantage. But now, you have to buy sandpaper to do it. Now, the sandpaper is not that expensive, but um, you're constantly replacing it. A lot of times you have to use like a spray adhesive to attach it to the plate glass, and you're always ripping off the old stuff, putting on new stuff. Um, it's not my favorite way to do it, but I did uh, do this for a while, and it worked really well. But the good thing about it is it's cheap, and it, it teaches you a lot of the mechanics of sharpening and teaches you what you, know, what you like and what you don't like about the process. So you can learn a lot from it. So that's, that's really the cheapest way that I find to get into sharpening and wind up with really, really well honed uh, chisels and plane blades without spending a lot of money. Eh. Um, now, of course, when you talk about water stones and oil stones, um, the more traditional ways of sharpening, uh, you know, those price-wise run the gamut. I mean, you've got the, the cheaper ones, don't really even have a name, just little, you know, maybe some little uh, Asian symbols stamped on them uh, to some of the more expensive brands like the, the Nortons and, um, uh, well, we'll get into some of the other exceptions to that. The water stones are great. They cut, they cut really fast um, and they're really popular. I mean, I think most of you probably have water stones. Uh, unlike oil stones, obviously they use oil as a lubricant, water stones just use water. Um, it's cleaner, it's uh, like I said, they cut faster, but the problem with a water stone is they have a tendency to wear quicker so they dish out faster. So after, you know, a couple months of sharpening and sort of, you know, favoring the center of the stone, you're going to wind up with a little bit of a dish in there and you've got to fix that. So typically you have to get, um, you know, one of those big diamond plates or um, some of the companies have kits that you, you could buy, even, uh, you know, things that you could sprinkle grit on and then flatten it that way. Uh, either way, that's part of the maintenance of having water stones, so you have to be aware of that. Now, I had some water stones, just plain old uh, uh, Japanese water stones for a long time, and they were okay, but I eventually wanted to upgrade to something that was a little bit more durable, and this is, again, now stepping up to a higher price bracket because these things are not cheap by any means. These are, <clears throat> these are Shapton ceramic water stones. Now they're not exactly the same thing as a traditional water stone because they have a, the ceramic property to them. They're harder. Uh, may take a little bit longer to sharpen with these, but there's a few good things about them. Number one, they don't wear as easily. They don't uh, get a dish in them quite as quickly. And the other thing is a lot of times water stones need to be soaked uh, in water for a while before you actually use them. These, you literally just uh, spray 
a few little droplets of water on there and go. You don't have to pre-soak these at all. Uh, but if you go and get the whole set, they get more expensive as they get finer. So what I actually have is four of them. I've got a 120 for the really, really rough work that we need to do. Then I jump up to a thousand, and then a five thousand, and then this really fine eight thousand. Now, if I remember correctly, these guys go as high as thirty thousand. Thirty thousand practically costs thirty thousand uh, dollars. It seems that way. It's very expensive. Um, they range from thirty to over a hundred dollars a stone, if I'm not mistaken. Check uh, Amazon. They definitely have um, some pretty pretty big price tags, but honestly it's well worth it. I've, I have yet to have to, um, to do anything to these stones as far as flattening them. And the great thing is they've got this perforated case, it's all ready to go, and then when you're done you just close it. And because it's perforated down here, the stones dry even though you just left it in the same container you were working with. And these little rubber feet at the bottom too, which is kind of nice. So uh, those are the stones that I use at this point. Um, let me read some of the comments and see if anybody has any questions so far. Jeff, go ahead, ask a question. Brian, we'll talk about honing jigs in a minute too. Glass backed Shaptons, I don't even know what those are, Mac. I'll have to check that out. Waiting for Jeff's question. Three, two, oh, okay. Techie's got a question. <laughs> Does the jig wear out over time too? Um, you mean like the honing, a honing jig? I mean, most of them are made out of metal, so I hope they don't wear out. I have two honing jigs that I'll show you in a little bit, and they both sides of the spectrum as far as inexpensive and, and pricey, and we'll look at the differences. If I was buying some water stones, Mike, I probably would just go for one of the Norton starter kits. I think I even put a few, maybe one or two of those in the, uh, in the Wood Whisperer store just because I think it's a great way to get started. And the other thing is, you know, we'll get into it when we talk about honing jigs, but it's, you know, stones are good because they kind of give you an opportunity to, um, to learn how to do this stuff freehand. When is sharp, when are you sharp enough? Well, I guess... That's a tough question because I think um, there are different levels of sharpness for different woodworkers. I mean, uh, there, are some, there are some people out there who will not settle for anything less than absolutely uh, frighteningly, sh you know, sharp uh, chisels. For instance, oh, my screensaver turned off. That's not good. Um, you know, some people will not settle for anything less than a mirror finish on the bevel. And other people are perfectly satisfied taking it off of, let's say, a thousand grit uh, stone and calling it a day. So it really depends. It depends on how far you want to take it. What I would suggest doing is try with a couple of your chisels. Take one, you know, it's maybe a thousand grit. And if you have the means, take one higher. Take it to five thousand or eight thousand. Really hone the, the hell out of it. And see if you notice a difference. See if the edge lasts longer. See if it cuts better and you can make a decision. Maybe maybe you don't need to do all of that if it's working for you but if you never try a finely honed chisel then you'll never know for sure if it's going to make that much of a difference for you uh, with your work um, and yes I do sharpen enough so that it shaves arm hair and I am one of those people who walks around with some bald patches once in a while and looks really stupid okay what makes me happy um, I don't usually go beyond my 8,000. A lot of times I don't even go beyond my 5,000. I think that's more than adequate for most work. Um, I do, you'll see, I'll show you my system, what I usually wind up doing, and it's typically enough, I don't know if the camera's gonna see it. Okay, see I have a dish in the middle, there's a hollow ground there, and that's because I use the jet system, and I'll show you that in a second. If you only use stones, or the scary sharp system, and that's all you use, you will not have this hollow in here. You're gonna have a flat bevel, which is perfectly fine. Uh, I actually prefer the hollow though, uh, because it's actually less material to hone. Um, you're really only worried about the back end and the tip when you have a hollow bevel. And that's, I don't know if the light is catching it good enough that you could see that. 
Okay, but if you get your reflection in there, you are definitely sharp enough, I would say. So the other option, and this is new to me, I, I haven't even used these yet, but they just sent them to us, so I haven't had a chance to play with them. I know you guys have seen these things, the diamond, uh, diamond plates, these uh, DMT Duo Sharp. They have a whole bunch of different uh, grades of these. These are really nifty. Now, the, the, I think the one drawback is going to be their price. But these diamond plates are great for... Um, I had one before this, but it was a little tiny one. And I used that for the most rough things that I needed to do. So sharpening my scrapers, for instance. I didn't want to take my scraper to one of my shaftings because it's so thin. And you're going back and forth and trying to hone the edge. I don't even bother. So what I usually do is use that diamond uh, plate for that operation. And um, I'm really thinking these are going to be cool. I haven't had a chance to work with it, but I'm anxious to. Now, the one thing I would almost definitely guarantee I'm going to do is the, on the roughest one that I have, that's probably because it's like nice and wide. This would be perfect if you really get to a point that you need to flatten your other stones, something like this. Plenty of surface area. It's much bigger than a normal water stone. So uh, I think that's what I'm going to use the, the coarsest one for. But, let me see, what is the, uh, the grit that these goes up? The, the green one, which is this surface here, goes up to 1,200. That's, that's pretty fine. So, you can go the whole scale with these guys. Uh, but again, I can't really comment because I haven't used them yet, unfortunately. I wish I, I, wish I would have prepared a little bit. I didn't do my homework. They also have this little... Like I said, these guys, the uh, shaftings come in their own little case with a rubber feet, um, you know, preventing these things from sliding around, especially because you put water on them, kind of helpful if they're, if they're not going to slip and slide all over the place. So these have a little duo sharp base that uh, you just pop this little clip out of here, and you can take the uh, entire thing off and replace it with another one. Kind of neat. I put a few of these in the Wood Whisperer store too, if anybody wants to actually see them and see how much they cost. Uh, they are a little bit pricey, but they seem like they're going to last forever and uh, work really well. The other thing they sent us are their what they call their Dia Sharp, I guess. Now these are very interesting, and I don't know what I, I don't know what I think of them yet. Again, haven't used them, but check them out. It's basically like a big steel plate and this is uh, 8,000 mesh they're calling it and I guess it's sort of diamond encrusted on this side and um, that's the sharpening surface and that's the, uh, the back end doesn't look all that different doesn't even feel all that different but apparently there is a really fine uh, grit on there and it's very heavy so Interesting stuff. Um, again, I can't really give you an opinion on it because I haven't played with it, but I think we're really looking at the higher end of the sharpening, of, at least financially speaking, the higher end of the sharpening scale at this point. Like I said, I wanted to work uh, from cheap to the more expensive stuff. Now, um, honing guides. Okay, This is probably the cheapest honing guide you're going to see. Well, the cheapest honing guide are these things right here. Um, you know, if you can learn how to use your, your fingers and sharpen effectively, think of how much money, frustration, time you're going to save. Um, but if you're not that confident and, and you want to sort of get a little bit of a help, these honing guides are actually really, really handy to have around. They are as simple as can be. You basically put a, a plane or a chisel into the cradle here. And the top is usually for your uh, plane blades. And in the middle, you can see it's got these little uh, angular sort of divots in there. If you open up wide enough, you'll see what I'm talking about. The chisels go inside here, like so. And all you really need to do is make the adjustments, pull it in as far as it needs to go, so that you wind up with the right angle of attack, the right bevel angle. Okay, so if you're, you know, 30 degrees, 25 degrees, whatever it is. Uh, and then once you're set, tighten it up. You can put a screwdriver in there, tighten it up even more. And this little wheel just kind of rolls. And it's actually very easy at that point to just kind of move back and forth. Okay. 
Now this you find you'll have some limitations. Uh, the way it grips the tool is not exactly the best for like Japanese chisels because Japanese chisels on the side usually have some odd angles. Um, so it's really not the best option there, but it only costs, I think it's less than 10 bucks for that honing uh, guide, if I'm not mistaken. So um, you can't really get much cheaper than that. And it's, it's good to have around. It's a pretty handy little thing. Now, on the other side of the scale is the Veritas uh, MK2. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I bought this about two years ago, um, and I haven't used it yet. And I'll show you why in a second. Now, if I, if I do need to do a lot of uh, stone sharpening or scary sharp, I'll probably bust this guy out and use it. But the reason I have it is because what I'm primarily using these days is my jet uh, wet sharpener. Okay? But if you're looking to step up from this little guy, I, the reason I bought this was because I heard so many awesome things about it. Um, typically, when you sharpen, once you get this bevel nice and evenly uh, honed, a lot of times you want to put a micro bevel right at the tip, which means if you're at, say, 25 or 30 degrees, you want to be able to just go up another maybe one degree, half degree, uh, depending on how you, know, how you want to go with it. But you want to tilt it up just a little bit so that now all you're sharpening is that very little, tiny little tip up there. And that actually makes, it makes your life a little bit easier in the long run because all you need to do the next time you want to um, just sort of treat the edge and sharpen it up a little bit is hit that micro bevel. You don't actually have to hit the entire bevel, just that little tiny one, and it saves you a lot of time. So uh, it's a great thing to do, and this system has, you know, settings on it where you can just kind of, once you finish sharpening the main bevel, you could just flip this, again, I don't know how it works, but I know there's a quick way to get the micro bevel like that. So, um, kind of a cool option. I really wish I would have played with it, but I, I haven't had a chance to. And before I jump over to the uh, jet sharpener and show you the system that I use, a uh, combination of things that I use to sharpen, I'll see if anybody's got any uh, specific questions before we move on. Make it next month's giveaway? <laughs> no thanks, I do want it. I know I'm going to use it one day. So. Diamonds are hard to unclog? I mean like the, uh, the diamond plates, Techie? Well, you know, I've heard, um, I think I was reading something at Pop Woodworking, or yeah, I think it was Pop Woodworking, where they were saying that they actually like the diamond plates because of the texture on the top, that the space between all these little dots here seems to give the, uh, the slurry of metal and water that you create, uh, give it a place to escape so that it actually stays, it sharpens more effectively over the course of a sharpening session. Now, I feel the texture, so there definitely is some logic to that, but I, I don't know for sure. I'm not going to pretend to know the answer, but that's, that's what uh, Pop Woodworking says. Okie doke. The, the thing that I usually do, and again, now we're at the top of the scale as far as price goes. Um, oh, gouges? I don't actually have any slip stones, Jim, and I should. The problem is um, I just I don't turn very much, so I don't uh, I don't do more than just uh, the Wolverine sharpening jig on a um, a grinder. So I can show you that too if we have time to do that. Uh, let me show you the jet system real quick. I'm gonna have to get the camera in a useful position here for you guys. Bear with me for a minute. I'm thinking if I go high on this one, we'll be good. Now, these wet sharpeners, I'm sure you've seen the, uh, the Tormek, you've probably seen the Jet. Let's get this way. Hey, how's that for some branding there? Jet will love that. Okay, these wet sharpeners are uh, 
pretty straightforward. You just have a big sharpening stone on this side, and you've got the uh, honing wheel leather straw dealy on the other side. And it's got some little drawers and compartments for accessories and things that I'm going to use. So what I usually do, let's say you've got a chisel that's got the crack beat out of it and you got to start over. There's a couple things you have to be concerned with. First of all, flattening the back of the chisel. That's not really something that I'm comfortable. Um, turn the gain up or pull the mic closer. Yes, I can. Problem is if I pull the mic closer, the, the computer is the mic. So if I get closer, it screws up the, uh, the shot. But I will try to get the microphone louder. Is that a little bit better? Okay. Okay, here we go. So, the problem is, like I said, if I don't consider this, although they would, they would sell it as an all-in-one solution, I don't consider it an all-in-one solution at all. Uh, when you have a chisel, especially a new chisel, you want to make sure that the back of that chisel, the flat end, is completely flat. And I find that the only way that you can do that is with a stone of some sort. You need a really flat surface. Um, some people argue that you might be able to use the side of the stone, but I, I don't like doing that. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a great idea. Um, and it doesn't really work that well either. So once you have the chisel nice and flat using one of your stones, then I think it's safe to, to jump to this system. And remember I was talking earlier about the hollow um, bevel. Well, the reason we have a hollow bevel is because of this machine. Oops. Okay, because we're sharpening on a round surface, obviously, if you look at from a side profile, what it's going to do is create uh, a dish in the bevel that you can really only see once you start to, uh, to hone the edge. So, what you typically do is just like with the honing guide, you've got to you got to put the uh, chisel in position like this, lock it down. Let me make sure I don't have this backwards. I do. It's got to go the other way. Okay. Now the great thing about this is it holds it in a fixed position and all you have to do is put some downward pressure and go back and forth to keep it sharp. Uh, it does really, it just does all the work for you. Uh, if you have some really, really messed up chisels and you need to reestablish that bevel, this is going to be slow. So you may not, uh, you may not exactly want to do that. If you have to reestablish a bevel completely, you're probably better off with a traditional grinder, and then you come over here once you hit that angle that you needed. Um, but if you want, I can fire this guy up and show you how it works real quick. Usually I just eyeball the angle and look for the light to stop coming through. It's pretty good. Tighten it down. You gotta be careful to uh, tighten evenly so that you don't skew the chisel here either. Okay, so you gotta you gotta fill this little trough here with water. La, 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 la. And the stone is gonna soak up a huge amount of water here. I'll turn it on real quick so it turns. So the water level jumps down immediately because the stone sucks it all up. So I'm not going to spend too much time doing this because uh, I think what we'll have to do is do an actual sharpening instructional type thing later. This was more of an introduction to, uh, 
different sharpening options. Okay, so you turn this guy on. You've got an RPM speed control on one side. And it's really, I mean, it doesn't get any simpler than this. Just go back and forth. Okay. So, typically, if the chisels are in pretty good shape, that's not going to take much effort. Uh, really, a couple minutes per chisel, per bevel. Um, the other thing, if you're really trying to get aggressive with this, they have a grading stone. So you can actually grade the surface of this and change its grit property so that it actually acts like something smoother. So you've got the smooth side and the rough side. So if you hold this on here, you can actually make it a rough texture. And then once you do all your rough sharpening, switch back to your, your fine grain. And believe it or not, that does a really, really good job. Uh, getting you pretty close to where you need to be. Now once you come off of, off of the, uh, the actual sharpening stone, what you normally would do is come over to the leather strop and add some of this honing compound, which is the metal polish. Add a bunch of that goop on there, maybe a little bit of honing oil with it so it makes a nice slurry and you can sharpen and really, really get that mirror finish over here on this side. So that's what they expect you to do to create that sort of mirror, uh, mirror finish, super finely honed chisels. Uh, what I like to do, though, and that's why I keep the stones around, is a lot of times I come right off of the, uh, the turning wheel, and then I'll jump over to, you know, maybe my... Uh, 5,000 shafted and if you have water stones it's an opportunity to take your honing guide and then jump onto the water stones and do the really really fine stuff with the stones. Um, I find that I don't really have a whole lot of control over this it doesn't feel like it's as regular uh, of a surface as I want so uh, I've had good results with it but I've had better results when I've then processed it through all of my stones um, so either way I think you're gonna have success either way but if you do invest that much money in a machine like this it is nice to know that you don't necessarily have to use anything else you could uh, just use this machine with the exception of flattening the back which is the only the only thing that I don't think you could really accomplish on this unit so again that's the most expensive option um, but clearly from just a couple bucks onto a couple hundred bucks there's a lot of different ways that, uh, that you can do the, uh, the whole sharpening thing. Um, did you want me to talk about the turning stuff too? That's really simple. I have a very over, overly simplified um, regimen for sharpening my turning tools. Well, before I do that, any questions on what I've uh, talked about? Uh, morning wood is, is absolutely right. You do want to adjust the speed. Um, as the stone gets smaller, you know, obviously it's going to change the amount of contact with the metal. And they have a dial on this one where you can kind of, you can kind of measure with the meter to see if it's, uh, if it's been ground down enough that you need to do something about it. And you can change the speed to, uh, to make adjustments for that. <laughs> well, thank you, Woodrat. Uh, I will go on record to say that, yes, you should wear eye protection when you do anything, but um, uh, this is not one of those things that I feel is a high-risk, uh, you know, item flying or anything like that. It's such a slow-speed grinder. But officially on record, yes, use your eye protection. <laughs> do you get a prize for being right? Uh, sure. I'll send you a grading stone. I have an extra one. <laughs> well, yeah, if you got enough stem, cell, stem cells in the freezer, you know, what do you need eyeballs for? Um, now, as far as the turning tools go, wow, where is my grinder? Oh, okay. I know where it is. Hang on a moment and I will get it.
And you know what we'll do? Instead of me bringing it over here, I'm going to bring the camera to it because it's under a stand, which is under a tool, which is going to be a lot of work to remove it. So let's go on a road trip. See that down there? That's the grinder. And, oopsie, hold on a second. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, I uh, hope no one's eating dinner. Okay, so basically it's just a standard grinder. And on the base of the grinder is the Wolverine system and that's what that little metal thing with the red handle is and basically this arm here goes into the jig like that it helps if you put it in the right way okay so that your turning tool the base of your turning tool sits in here and you go into the sharpening unit like so. There's actually another accessory for turning gouges called the, the Veragrind that helps you uh, turn bowl gouges much easier than this system would with just the handle here. Um, I can pull this all the way out if you guys are interested enough in seeing the whole thing, but I wasn't, uh, I totally forgot about discussing turning tools. So my bad there. Yeah, the, the Wolverine, you know, and I'm not much of a turner, so when, when I turn, the last thing I want to do is worry about sharpening all the time. Uh, the Wolverine jig is, is killer, and uh, the Veragrind attachment with it, if you use like a super flute bowl gouge, um, like the Ellsworth gouge, it's so awesome. It gets perfect, uh, a perfect edge every time. If you can get a, a stone that's a high enough grit, a lot of times, Sharpening in between, you know, parts of your turning session literally is a, a one, one and a half minute process and you're back over at the lathe. It's really a great system. Did I get the Makita back yet? Oh, you think I uh, went on a vigilante mission to find it? <laughs> uh, I don't think the uh, Makita's coming back. Uh, it can, Brian, if you really, if you really uh, push too hard or you leave the edge on there too long. But on a 120, I think that's what I have, a 120 grit stone, um, it's really a fast thing. I mean, you're, you're on there just for a couple seconds, you give it a little twist, go back the other way, give it a little twist, and you're done. Uh, it doesn't really have an opportunity to heat up. Did you just call my dog Laxy? Um, technically, uh, yes, Jim. Now, I haven't actually done that with the Jet uh, Sharpened a Card Scraper, but I think you should, you should be able to. There's no reason why you can't. Um, you know, but of course, the, even the most basic uh, stone can sharpen a, a scraper. Um, as far as sharpening goes, you don't really need to get that finely honed before you're ready to, to, to use the... Uh, oh, sorry, to... Um, curl the uh, edge. Why am I losing the terminology? What the hell is it called? Turning the hook. <laughs> I don't know why that just left my brain, but um, I usually go to, you know, maybe 500, 600 grit when I'm doing a, a scraper. That's why I said usually I use that old diamond uh, plate that I have, which I think when I bought it was only like 250 grit, and uh, that usually gives me an, a pretty decent edge to work with on the scraper. All right, I'm going to turn this off. I think we did the bulk of that um, sharpening business, and um, we can stop the recording. Ooh.